Hello Kerbal Space Program fans, Matthew Carr here, and today I'll be uh, showing you some various ways I've been fooling around with to get Kerbals off the moon without them being inside or attached to a spacecraft. Now the reason for this is somebody on Reddit was proposing some various challenges, and one thing they proposed was stacking a bunch of Kerbals up to get them off a larger body. Now that's pretty much impossible as stacking them up doesn't really buy us anything. Despite this, I thought there might be some fun and interesting ways to get Kerbals into lunar orbit without them just riding a spacecraft. So here are a few of my more interesting attempts. Now to start off with, I just try the usual jetpack. Just try to jetpack into orbit. Nothing really special, just burn and mostly burn horizontal eastward and see how far I can make it. And this works relatively well but it doesn't quite get me to orbit. It gets me really, really close to orbit and not quite there. As the camera transitions to an orbital camera, you see it spin and put me spinning and my periopsis here is pretty much inside the moon, so not quite successful. So now I start trying a different strategy. I figure maybe if I hit one Kerbal with another Kerbal going at a fairly high velocity, I'll get them to have enough speed going and switch to the Kerbal I hit and we'll still have a full jetpack, and he'll be able to go flying up into orbit. Now, I tried this several times and the first thing I learned is it's harder than you might think to hit a Kerbal. Yeah. And so I kept at it. And not quite there. Maybe now? Nope. Uh, how about now? Ooh, so close. Coming in? Oh, ow. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, that one hurts. Oh, and that one should have hit. Doesn't look like it did anything, though. And this one, even better. Oh, oh, I got a hit off, and he stumbled slightly. So I figure maybe I need to be in the air to get him to hit properly. So jump for it. And nope. Oh, okay, maybe a little closer. Now this time coming in. Jump. Ooh. It's not good to be a Kerbal today. Now we're coming in again. Oh, and there we got a clean hit. And all he does is jerk around a little bit. Yeah, not great for him. So, at that point I realized that's probably not going to work. The Kerbal physics doesn't really give good impact on collision. So I figure maybe if I stack them and then use the jetpack of one Kerbal, I can lift both of them up and then have the top Kerbal fly off with still having a full jetpack. Now this time I had him with his jetpack on and he kind of auto-adjusts using up a whole bunch of his fuel. And I get a little bit of air, but it's actually mostly the fuel of the top one burning that's keeping him up. That's not very useful. So I tried turning off the jetpack, and then I just can't get anywhere. Yep, nothing at all. And if I try to jump, uh, it doesn't go well for the curls. So, new strategy. I said I wouldn't go in a ship, or attached to a ship, but I didn't say anything about on a ship. So here we go with that. This is a bit trickier than it might first seem, because balancing a Kerbal on a ship is very difficult. They have a tendency to slide off in one direction or another. With the proper camera angle, though, and good steering, I'm able to keep them just centered on the ship as I get it up to speed and get it up to a good height. Once that's done, I just switch over to his jetpack and fly off into the horizon. This allows me to put almost all of his jetpack velocity into horizontal velocity, allowing me to get into a nice orbit, about 10 kilometers by 19 kilometers, with still 0.4 units of fuel remaining. Not bad. Next up, a scenario that many of us are unfortunately too familiar with. Sometimes you land on the moon and your spacecraft isn't quite upright. And by not quite upright, I mean completely lying down. Now, this doesn't have to be a total loss. If you rev up the engine to the point the spacecraft is almost moving, but not quite, so the maximum throttle you can without it moving, and then you just have your Kerbal jump into that exhaust stream, he'll be shot off into the distance. This is great and he only receives a moderately high dose of radiation from that nuclear engine. If you then throttle up, you can get into orbit, and in this case, have 0.1 units of fuel remaining. I personally like to clean up my toys though, so I'll just stand this right back up again. Now my next strategy uh, was 
pretty simple. I decided I could get up to a good amount of speed using a rover. So I just get up a rover on the moon, go really quick, go off a hill and get airborne. And then spin the rover so I can flip him with even more speed. And hit the ground and get a little more speed, because why not? Then just fling him out. And you just power up the engines and off he goes. Again, up into orbit. Doesn't leave me a whole lot of fuel at the end though. Let's try something new. Okay, and let's try that again, maybe with less dying. Using the power from this trebuchet, I'm able to get into a nice orbit and have a decent amount of fuel left remaining in my tanks. Enough to do some orbital maneuvers and maybe rendezvous with a ship if I need to. It's sure as heck not efficient, but it's really fun. And it looks awesome. After all this practice, I found that I could get to orbit with the jetpack alone. My technique is pretty simple, and I'll share it with you so you can use it to get off the moon yourself. Just face east, jump, and then hold shift and W. This will make you burn forward and up. Keep holding them down until you get to about 100 meters per second of vertical velocity. At that point, let go of shift and just use W to burn forward. Your goal is to hit a peak somewhere in the 8 to 10,000 meter range and use up most of your fuel on horizontal velocity. Then check your orbit out and then wait until you get to the peak of it to use up the final remainders of your fuel to circularize. This gets me in around a 10k orbit. You can see me go into a spin as I use the last of my fuel here. Well, that about wraps it up. Thank you very much for watching my video. I hope you enjoyed it and possibly even learned something from it. Our craft file for the trebuchet is in the description below. This is Matthew Carr, signing out.